Hey everybody and welcome back to Critical Crafting. Dylan, your crafting DM here. Um, I just printed one of the coolest models that I have had the um, pleasure of printing in a really long time, this Demogorgon. And I'm not finished painting with it yet, but um, it inspired me because I wanted to put some like object source lighting on it. And then I thought to myself, I can just make it glow. So today I'm gonna be showing you how to add um, some lights to your tables so you can create some like really cool bases and terrain that will glow. And if, you know, terrain isn't your thing and you want some minis that are gonna glow, I got you covered. This video is going to be divided up into a couple different segments and I'll put different timestamps in the description. So if you want to skip forward through different things, just check down there and you can jump through the video. So before we get into the crafting portion of this video, I kind of want to talk a little bit about where these 3D printable files came from. These are from Archvillain Games, which is one of my favorite companies that are creating 3D printable models right now. What I love about them is, first of all, they have a monthly Patreon, which has a ton of models that get released every single month. These are incredibly unique sculpts, and I absolutely love them. One of the things that I really appreciate that Archvillain does that's very different from most other 3D printers or 3D print designers is focus heavily on detail in their models. Every single one of these models is, it just has an insane level of detail, something you would expect out of an extremely expensive resin model. Um, the other thing that I love about this is that most of these, if not all of them, as the name would suggest, are villainous characters. I really don't need any more PC characters to throw into my game, so having a bunch of evil characters or monsters is super, super beneficial for me. The other thing is that while a lot of times heavily detailed models are very difficult to print, they pre-support all of their models. I got to talk with their pre-support team. They're an awesome group of people and they do a wonderful job pre-supporting their models so that when you go to print them, you don't have to worry about all the crazy intricate details in there. It's all set for you to go ahead and print. The other thing that I really, really love is that they release a monthly adventure. So you're saying, okay, you know, these are unique models, but how am I ever gonna use them in my game? Like, how am I gonna stat them? They do it for you. They create an adventure or an encounter and they release it every single month on their Patreon. You can find a lot of their files for sale on My Mini Factory, but a better deal would be to sign up for their Patreon because they just have awesome, awesome stuff. So that's my little fanboy bit there about Archvillain. I love the fact that it's like macabre and dark and, and that's kind of my thing. Um, but that's where these files came from that you're seeing today. And if you like what you see, check them out. They're an awesome group of people. I printed these models using translucent resin from Elegoo, as well as the Frozen Sonic mini printer. And I'll put links to those in the description as well. This is my first video that's combining both 3D printing and crafting. And I'm hoping to do more where I'm combining the two in the future, because I really enjoy both hobbies. So one thing you are going to need are these Silopex fairy lights which you can find on Amazon. The important thing about these is the batteries are replaceable, so you don't have to worry if it goes out. You're able to easily replace the batteries and get in there. And it's a pretty simple process to put these things together. It works on just about any model that you can 3D print to make something glow and to make some terrain. So all we gotta do is go ahead and put some hot glue on the back of the model here. And then we're gonna take our fairy lights and stick them down onto the hot glue. And holy crap, that's hot. So once you have your model printed, all you're going to do is figure out where you're going to stick those lights. I already know I want light coming through some of the cracks as well as where the lava is on this. So I kind of have a good idea of where I want to put everything. Because terrain is such a big thing and these are such small lights, I want to make it as bright as I possibly can. So I put some aluminum foil on the back of this just to make it a little bit more reflective. And all I have to do is kind of crumple it up, get it in roughly the shape that I need, and then glue it onto the back. 
After that, I glue the battery packs for each of my lights uh, facing with the screws pointed up so I can change the batteries if I need to. It's also important to make sure whatever piece of terrain you're working on, you have the switches pointed out. So again, you have easy access to turn these on and off. To get this as bright as I wanted, I ended up using five of my fairy light uh, packs. But if you're doing something smaller, which we'll look at a little bit later, you can use less. It's just that I wanted this to be as bright as I possibly could. Shiny. Now, because adding those battery packs is gonna actually lift the base up so there's a space underneath, I need to fill that in with something. So what I'm going to do is just tear apart little bits of insulation foam and then hot glue them onto the bottom. And these are basically the perfect size um, to block this off which is between a quarter and a half of an inch, but you could go even bigger if you wanted to. The thing is with this, it's going to be a piece of terrain, so it's okay if it's a little bit taller. You could also do this if you were using a smaller base. So I did a few minis where the battery pack didn't quite fit into the base, and instead I glued it onto the bottom sticking out, and then I just put some foam around it to block it off. The next thing that I'm going to do is apply some Apple Barrel black paint essentially to cover up areas that I don't want light to show through. So when you're working on your terrain or a mini or something, you might use a different color. For this, I'm basically going for a basic stone. So I'm applying that almost like a dry brush, maybe a little bit thicker to help pick up some of the detail and then leave areas where I want stuff to glow through. I found a general dry brush just wasn't enough, so I ended up doing almost a base coat in a lot of the areas, just being very careful about where I applied the paint. Next, I dry brush on some Apple Barrel Pewter Gray. It's important as you go along to check and make sure you're not covering up anything that you want to glow through. And the next step is going to be putting on a little bit of Apple Barrel White, just dry brushing in a few areas to give it a little bit more pop. One thing that I like to do with all of my pieces, even when I do have a glow effect, is add a little bit of OSL or object source lighting. So I went ahead and added just a little bit of red, so even when the lights turned off, this will still look kind of like it's glowing. I also like to add a little bit of green in there, just to kind of make the stone a bit more interesting. One thing I like to do near the end is add a little bit of flocking in there. This helps it to blend in, even if it's in a forest or a jungle, or even in the dungeon, just something that helps it fit in just about anywhere. The last thing I like to do is add a few of the Citadel skulls, just to really make this thing feel like a cool piece of terrain. Normally I paint these already with one coat of paint, hit them with a wash, and then they're ready to go just break the sprues off and glue them down. And with that, you have a beautiful piece of glowing terrain. One thing to point out is you can do this with just about any piece of terrain or scatter. It doesn't have to be a base, and if it is a base, you can blow it up and do the same thing that I did here. This is a technique that can be applied to multiple different models, not just the one that I'm showing you. So feel free to kind of play around with this. It's a great way to kind of wow your players. You know, if you have something that at first is inactive and then they activate a trap or a rune or something and it starts glowing, it's a really fun thing that you can integrate into your game. And people seem to really like having these interactive glowing things on the table. So we've looked at how to make some terrain pieces. Now let's look at how you can do the same thing and create a glowing miniature. The first thing that I figured out is that you need a 75 millimeter base in order for one of the fairy light battery packs to fit underneath. Like I said before, you could do a smaller one and then just add some stones around it, but you're going to end up with a larger base in the end anyway. What I do is put the file into Prusa Slicer and then just resize it to 75 millimeters. The next step is to export the base for the model that you're working on. This is important because you're going to be putting the lights inside of this base. You export it as an STL, and then I open another free program called Mesh Mixer with the file in there. An added precaution will be to run this through 3D Builder, which will allow you to repair it if there's any issues when you're exporting the model. So here I've hit Edit and then Generate Face Groups. What I'm going to be doing is extending the base down so there's room for that battery pack to fit inside. Next, I use the Select tool and I'm just going to select the bottom of the model so I can pull it out. I want to try and get this as exact as possible and not extend out over any of the other parts of the model I don't want to manipulate. So checking around to make sure nothing has extended out is a good idea, and then making sure you unselect those portions. Once I've done that, I'm going to deform, transform, and then pull that 
piece out so that it extends. Checking around, it's not a perfect round base, but it's not a huge deal for me. I can sand it if I need to. Now we're going to hollow the model so we can fit that inside. So we go to hollow, it hollows it with the default settings there, and we're just going to hit accept. So the model is hollow, but we want to create a space underneath where we can actually stick the battery pack in. So I've imported a ruler from Thingiverse, and I'm just going to use the plane cut tool to kind of line it up and make sure that I have enough space for my battery pack to fit, and that's going to give us the hole in the bottom. I try and make sure I line it up uh, so it's as perfectly level with the bottom of the base as I can so I don't end up with something askew, and then go to about three quarters to a half an inch, somewhere in there, more like the three quarters, just to be safe. And I'll hit accept and plane cut. So now you can see on the bottom there is the open space, and that's where we're going to stick our battery pack. One thing you can do but isn't necessary all of the time is to put this into Chidu box and then add a hole. That'll allow you to actually put the lights up through the base. And you can use the hollowing function in Chidu box and then add a hole in the bottom of the model so you can put the lights up inside the model itself. So I've sliced everything in Chidu box, I've added the holes in there, and I'm ready to put my battery packs inside. All that I'm doing is a process super similar to what we did before with the larger base, and I can put my wire up through inside my model if I want to. I found with this guy I really didn't like that, so I ended up just gluing it onto the bottom. And honestly, with no paint or anything, this already has an awesome ghostly effect. It is so creepy and cool. I love it. You know what else is creepy and cool? The video on durable spider webs. Nope, you should nope, check it out. Not right now. Uh, back in the drawer. Them. Back no. in the crafting no, drawer. There you help. go. Come on. I can help Get you. Get in there. Ah! Uh, more. And so I'm going to add some reflective aluminum foil in there as well. The process is the same as what we did earlier with the larger base, just gluing the lights in, gluing the aluminum foil, and then gluing in our battery pack. I found that with the 75mm and the height that I used, I had enough room to get my fingers in there to turn the switch on and off. The next step is to just use my super glue and my Instaset spray to put the model together. I like to add paint to my models even if they are going to be glowing, so here I am mixing Game Color's Livery Green with Model Color's Flat Green to create sort of a yellowish tone. Um, it's pretty bright, but if I just use this it picks up all that really cool detail. Since I want this guy to have kind of like a Minas Morgul Wraith feel to it, I'm also going to add in some of the Model Color Lemon Yellow. This is just going to add a little bit of highlight in a couple different areas. One thing that I find new painters seem to not do a lot is put on multiple layers of paint. So um, I've been working with some of my friends and they've been starting out painting and what I'm finding is very often they'll put on one layer of paint and then they're kind of like done. And if you just add two or three different layers and just put them in a few various areas, it really helps to give your model this kind of like light effect to it. It looks much more finished. So I really do recommend um, this sort of a painting tip adding something like that. I had already black on the base, so now I'm adding some more of that Apple Barrel Pewter Gray, dry brushing it on really quick and easy just to give it a little bit of a stone effect. And since I like to add a little bit of OSL so I can use this even if it's not lit up, I've once again mixed that game color livery green and now I've added some of the yellow so that I can give it a little bit of that lighting effect on the base. So there you have it, some simple techniques that will help you to be throwing some awesome glowing stuff at your players, keeping them engaged, and just making your table look awesome. Uh, I hope you liked the video, please do like and subscribe if you did. We'll see you next time on Critical Crafting.